As the state works to roll out a wind energy program, it's getting some pushback from coastal communities. Ocean City is challenging the Ocean Wind Project's plan to run electric cables under its streets and rivers, citing environmental concerns. Ted Goldberg heard their arguments at a recent Board of Public Utilities hearing, and he has more. How do you get energy from an offshore wind farm onshore? For the proposed Ocean Wind 1 project off the coast of South Jersey, the plan is to use an underground cable sneaking beneath this beach and snaking under streets in Sea Isle City. The construction in these underground electric lines really are, are no different than the many other underground electric lines that are installed and have operated for, for, for decades and decades throughout the state of New Jersey without issue. Eventually, the energy would reach the former BL England generating station, which was decommissioned three years ago. But several municipalities are challenging this plan. The county was presented with an offer based on an appraisal of other property, not this property. And they argue that putting a transmission line through Crookhorn Creek would disrupt wildlife and the fishing industry. The board should consider the possibility that these reasons are pretextual and that Ocean Wind is simply pursuing the easiest or least expensive route to its own benefit and to the detriment of the city, the county, and the public. The Board of Public Utilities heard arguments on Thursday for Ocean Wind One's preferred route through Sea Isle City and an alternative route which would push the cable through Great Egg Harbor Inlet. The attorney representing Ocean Wind One argues that the Great Egg Harbor route would be worse for wildlife, so it wasn't picked. There were a whole host of different um, criteria that the project evaluated and ultimately in regard to the interconnection um, at, at Upper Township, the route that we've described in the filing and that involves these two particular easements was determined to have the least cumulative impacts of any of the of the potential routes. The overwhelming benefit of the Great Egg Harbor route is the utter lack of disturbance to the citizenry of Ocean City, Cape May County and the public in general. It avoids roads traveled by and on the residents of Seattle City. The reasonable route of, of going through Ocean City and along the county road, it may be reasonable to the BPU, but it is not reasonable to the residents of the city of Seattle City. A state law passed last year makes it easier for developers to lay down transmission lines through communities. If their request for an approval is blocked, they can appeal to the Board of Public Utilities, and they can override local government if they find the permits to be, quote, reasonably necessary. Michael Donahue is the attorney representing Cape May County. He says this tactic violates home rule. Elected officials of the county feel strongly that the voters should not be disenfranchised such, uh, by a process such as this. With, with all due respect to every member of the board, where an unelected state authority steps into the shoes of elected officials and essentially sets them aside. The BPU has had the jurisdiction to overrule municipal and county determinations with respect to local zoning and siting approvals since literally the turn of the last century. That can't be a, a reasonable position to take. Elected officials do matter. The voters do matter. The Ocean Wind One project is slated to send 1,100 megawatts of power to New Jersey's homes, 10% of Governor Murphy's goal of 11,000 megawatts by 2040, and a mere fraction of what's to come. In Cape May County, I'm Ted Goldberg, NJ Spotlight News.